So 1 Peter 1, 23. Let's turn there. It reads, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So from this verse, many teach that when we're born again, it happens um, by the word of God. That's how we're born again, by the word of God. And they say that um, being born again is therefore a separate experience from being born of the water and of the spirit. And without in going into the details of uh, what they, what else they believe, that's the basic understanding they have. And use use First Peter one verse twenty three to to teach that doctrine um, that being born again is different than being born of the water and of the spirit. But if we just allow the context of what all that Peter's saying to speak to us, then it, it becomes very clear how we're born again of the word or by the word of God. Let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So many of you who understand the gospel that the apostles preach right now probably are, are understanding where, where, what I'm getting at. If being born again of, by the word of God... Um, is something different than being born of the water and of the Spirit, which anyone who understands the gospel knows that um, the water is referring to water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, where we are crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, and we rise with Christ, or resurrect with Christ, a new creation, having put on Christ, seeing our old man crucified and buried. And so when when 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says that... Um, through God's mercy, he hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Begotten is the same term as born. He's, be, be, he's be born, it's, it's like saying we've been born again, begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when we obeyed the gospel, that's when we took part in the first resurrection. That's when we were begotten again. So if you can understand what I'm saying, what I'm showing you through that verse, you can start to see how being born again by the word of God is now linked with being born of the water and of the spirit. Because being it's when we're born of the water that we um, are begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so that's really key is to is to see the links here. And then it. That's not all. In verse 22, it says, he's speaking to those who have already obeyed the gospel. He says, seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit. And then after he, he says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. He then says in verse 25, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So the word that we're born again by in verse 23 is the gospel that is preached unto us. It's the apostles gospel that's preached unto us. That's how we're born again. We either reject it or we obey it. When we obey it, we have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit. You have been begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We've been born again. You cannot separate being born again from being born of the water and of the Spirit, because it's the exact same thing. The word of 1 Peter 1.23, the word of God that we're born again by, is the gospel in verse 25. 25 if you look, look, look at it, it's clear. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So we receive that word when we, we hear the gospel and obey it. And so we can't, make, we can't separate being born of the water and of the Spirit from being uh, born again by the word of God, because the word of God that Peter is referring to is specifically the gospel. So then we can go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 15, the apostle Paul writes to those who have already been born again, who have already um, obeyed the gospel, he says, for though, for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, Yet have you not many fathers? 
For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you, how? Through the gospel, through the word of God. That's how the Apostle Paul begot them through the gospel or birthed them. It's the born-again experience that happens when people obey the gospel. So the focus is always the gospel. We turn to um, Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. So that th this is key. The gospel is that word by which we're born again. So when we go back to John chapter 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This is the same uh, experience as verse 5. All we see in verse 5 is that he extrapolates and expounds upon what he had just said in verse 3. He's not saying that bringing up a whole nother experience, trying to confuse Nicodemus. He's trying to get him to see his statement in verse 3 in a more spiritual light understanding that a man must be born of the water and of the Spirit in order to be born again. And so, uh, seeing the kingdom and entering the kingdom, to see something, it's like the Apostle Paul said, the eyes of your understanding being opened or enlightened. It, seeing is associated with knowing, perceiving, and understanding. So we must, we must know, perceive, and understand and enter the kingdom. So those, are, those things uh, go hand in hand. It's not like seeing the kingdom is a completely different experience than entering the kingdom. Um, so we know the kingdom when we enter the kingdom. And so, uh, yeah, and I think verses such as Titus chapter 3 verse 5 also speaks of the same understanding. It says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. And so the washing of regeneration is, I believe, referring to the being born of the water, and the renewing of the Holy Ghost is being uh, born of the Spirit or filled with the Spirit. So you can see the born-again experience is how we're saved. That's the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. When we obey the gospel, we receive the washing of regeneration, and we receive the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And so um, many passages, I mean, I could go into many more passages. I just wanted a, this to be a, 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 sh a short video because I've already done a video uh, that goes into much more depth on this subject. But hopefully if I keep it simple like this, um, the majority of people watching can, can see when we just use a few scriptures to, sh to show that uh, to, to be born again by the word of God is to hear the gospel. And when, and when we respond to the gospel, that's being born again by the word of God. And so the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And except a man be born again of the water and of the spirit, he shall not see or enter the kingdom of God. So I'll end that here, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask them, and I'd love to talk, talk with you about them. All right, uh, God bless you, and keep a lookout for more upcoming videos.